of the Blackout Show, where we delve into the rich history, the culture, the life experiences of Africans all over the globe. And I'm very privileged to have in the studio here today, Angie. Angie, you're very welcome. She's to my left here. And Mr. and Mrs. Kwe, very welcome all of you to the Blackout Show. Um, one thing that they have in common is the uh, all returnees coming to live back home now and would like to find out their experiences you know, so that people who are watching can understand what does it really feel like to make the move back to Africa? Um, and how do you feel when you finally make the move? What are some of the challenges you find, um, some of the experiences, as well as your aspirations for the future? What do you think uh, could work better? So that other people will have an easier um, way to come back because we want our brothers and sisters to come back. So thank you very much. Stay tuned. And this is the Blackout Show. So just a little bit about my guests here. Angie, to my left, um, used to live in the UK yes. and with a background in construction mm -hmm. and has been coming back and forth to Ghana for the past 20 years and has finally made it. So I say Akwaba. My bad, sir. Thank you, thank you. And uh, we have the Quays over here and uh, they have started a company called Certified Africa, which does everything about helping diasporans to move back home, uh, set up and start businesses, um, which is exactly what we want. We want to build our economy. So I want to welcome all of you onto the show. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll start with you, Angie. You're finally home, back from the UK. What made you finally move? Actually, I hadn't been traveling to Ghana for about 20 years. I've been traveling to Ghana for about five years, something like that. Okay. I've been traveling to the continent about 20 years. Wow. So I've been to other African countries. Great. I think the first the first was Nigeria. About, mm. Yeah, about 20 years ago. I see. And I just loved it so much. I just wanted to keep coming back to the continent mm -hmm. and explore other countries. Wow. I happened to stop with Ghana. Well, not stop. I haven't mm -hmm. stopped yet, but um, first came to Ghana about five years ago. Okay. And I just loved the experience. Mm. I loved the way I felt mm -hmm. when I was here. I loved the way I communicated with my brothers and sisters. I just love the way that everybody looks like me. You felt at home. Absolutely felt at home. And if I go in a chocho, which I do all the time, mm -hmm. And I just shut my mouth. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> from, you were from the UK. Nobody knows. Because you look very Ghanaian, and I'm sure a lot of people tell no, you that. Bad. Well, because we're brothers and sisters. Everybody same, same, speaks to me in truth. Same family, same family. And they only find out when I keep nodding and smiling <laughs> for like 10 minutes. Then you expose yourself. <laughs> I expose myself. Why well, not? Very soon, very soon, you, you probably lose all of it and you'd be, you'd, be, you'd be fully, fully, fully Ghanaian. I hope so. Wow, that's interesting. And you, you have family in the UK? Yes, I've got family worldwide, actually. We mm. come from Jamaica, so I've got a lot of family okay. in Jamaica. God. I've got family in Germany, okay. um, the UK, United States. Mm. Um, based in the UK for many years. Okay. And my family are back there. Since I was young, I never, ever felt like I belonged. Okay. Never. So that's when I moved to other European countries. Okay. And I felt good at first, but then the same feeling came back. Mm. Never felt like I belonged. Mm. And that's when I first started to travel to Af the African continent. Okay. I didn't have a plan back then, 20 years ago. Right. Only started probably about 10 years ago. And I thought to myself that I've got to get out of this, um, what I call it, the divided kingdom or the UKKK. 
I see. So I said, I've, so I started to make a plan. Mm -hmm. And after visiting, visiting several West African countries over the last few years, right. I stopped with Ghana. I just love the, you know, the vibrancy mm -hmm. and the way I feel, the way people make me feel. I, I just felt at home. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to come back. And the last time I was in Ghana was year of the return. I actually okay. didn't know it was year of the return. I just okay. happened to be here. Right. And everyone was saying it was year of return. And mm. I was like, okay, well, that's why I'm here then. Uh, just... <laughs> so December 2019, January 2020, I was last in Ghana. Okay. And that's when I said to myself, okay, this is it. Mm. By, 20, uh, by um, the end of 2020. 2020, that's yeah. it. Sorry, we're in 2021 now. Yeah. By the end of 2020, I have to leave Europe. Mm -hmm. I have to be out of here. Wow. I have to be gone. And what helped, what pushed me even faster yeah. was the lockdown. Okay. So I was in lockdown, practicing and studying chewing mm. for, for an hour every day oh. and planning my escape. Wow. Your escape. I like the word you use. Escape. <laughs> you, you, you finally made it out there and you, you landed home safe. Made it. Well, I we thank your ancestors for bringing you home. And... Um, I, I can tell that you, you feel good about it, but what, what is your family saying when you speak to them now? Oh, but, you know, there's always one in the family who does something and nobody else approves. Mm. I was that one. Okay. So, I still am. So, all the years I've been traveling to the African continent, right. my family have been saying, especially the ones in Jamaica, yeah. you know, we have got this so far. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, why are you going there? Because yeah. the world has been telling them the wrong that, story about exactly the dark continent that's right wow 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 that's lovely so you are essentially going to be <clears throat> like an ambassador um for your family in, in in letting them see that this is indeed is a possibility absolutely and i'm so glad and happy to say that some of my family members are coming around mm. slowly coming around they're seeing the sign of the times they're seeing what's happening in the world right and they know I'm onto something. Right. So I'm here to pave the way for them. That's wonderful. Friend, family and friends. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I mean, um, from somebody who has Jamaican ancestry, for you to find your, yourself back onto these shores, you've, um, you're waving the victory flag. You, yes. you, you had an ancestor who once left these shores and probably never in their greatest dreams ever imagined that one of their descendants would come back and, 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 and dignify that whole experience. And, and I think you've done that. So you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you very much. And I think Nanny of the Maroons, mm -hmm. who is one of our yeah, um, heroine um, heroes, Jamaican right. heroes, right. is actually from Ghana. From Ghana. It's, I remember when I so, read about that, I was like amazed. Yes. It's, uh, it was very deep. And she, she, she was very instrumental in, in um, you know, showing that African culture, lifestyle, spirituality has some impact and, and, and it worked over there. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. There's a lot of similarities and the people are still in Jamaica mm. speaking tree. Right. It, you'll find it in, in only a small part, which yeah. is Maroon Town. Maroon Town. I heard that yeah. around Akompong. Akompong, yes. Right, right, right. We, we hear a lot about that and I mean, it's not surprising because the same people, same blood, same history, yes. same culture. Um, and if you have a few people in a family who kept good records, then it's, it's very easy to trace back and know. Um, and I've seen, you know, foods like Bami and yes. um, different foods that are so uh, similar to what we eat, you know, so things... And actually, can I just say that um, what we have here in Ghana, wache, uh -huh. that is... Rice and Jamaican peace. national dish, rice and peas. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Wonderful. And I love them both. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, thank you very much, Angie. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely come back to you and delve more into your story. Let's go for a commercial break.
Welcome back. Okay, so now I get to talk to my other visitors, um, the Quays, Mr. and Mrs. Quay, a uh, lovely young couple. And I'll start with you, Kristen. I mean, where were you before you moved back home to Ghana? So I was living in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay. And I first came to Ghana in uh, 2016 I see. for a legal study abroad program. And uh, I was advised by someone um, that I should spend more than just a two-week period of time. I should really try to immerse myself mm. in the culture if I got a chance to go to Ghana. And so I researched different programs that I could do, and I mm -hmm. found one that would allow me to spend close to three months wow. here in Ghana. And so that is how, when I first came back. Wow. And, and you said, when was this? 2016. 2016. Okay, so now we're in 2021. Yes. And you've, you've actually made the move and actualized your dream. Yes. And um, you you knew him hum somehow. <laughs> because yes. uh, Kwe is a very ga name yes. and uh, Ni Ama is very, very ga. Yes. Do you want to yeah, so we actually met when she was here. Okay. So that's how we met. So I was kind of the assistant to the legal program at the law school, okay. Gimpa Law School. Okay. So that's how we basically first got in touch. Wow. And then one thing led to another. I see. <laughs> one beautiful thing led to another beautiful exactly. thing. I see. And now you've set up um, Certified Africa. Yes. And t tell us a little bit about that. So just to take you a little bit back, the whole idea of Certified Africa started when her parents came to Ghana. Okay. Once, before she left, the parents came to so put together an experience for them. Okay. And of course, they really enjoyed it. And they were like, whoa, we actually need the rest of our families to actually come and experience this amazing thing that we have experienced in Africa. Okay. So that's where the whole idea of, oh, how can we get more people beyond her family and friends mm. to come and also enjoy the same way these people have had such a great time. Right. So then we started extending beyond family and friends. And we decided to make it official, of course, okay. from there, to get more black people. You know, I remember sitting at a beach one time, we were kind of just thinking, looking at all the, the black people, they were like, well, if only these people knew that there was a place like Africa right. that they could actually come to, because a lot of them have no idea. Right. So that whole thing kind of inspired us to make it official and get more people, you know, from the diaspora to return back home. I see, that's, <clears throat> that's fantastic because you're, you're meeting two, 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 two things, um, killing two birds with one stone, which is, um, you know, developing the African economy and also educating people by showing them Africa is not the dark continent that has exactly. always been barraged and marketed to, just like uh, Angie was saying. Um, and so what has been your experience, Kristen, so far in, in how things are going with Certified Africa? So I, you know, I really have, from the first time that I came to Ghana, I felt at home. I knew by the the end of the three months that I was here that I could mm. see myself living here. And the entire time that I was here, I never once really interacted with any other African Americans. They were all Ghanaians who welcomed me in okay. and ushered me into the culture and taught me how to uh take the local transportation okay. i was learning um you know the local language right. i just really felt like it was a place that i needed to be and so you know we decided from there of course to start helping other people move mm. and um, travel to ghana the best way to tell someone about um what is happening here is to show them mm. and so they have to see it for them themselves right you know so and there's one thing that Certified Africa, of course, the business piece and yeah. how, you know, I used to work in the, the, the Ministry of Justice. Okay. And I was privy to a lot of meetings okay. where we had a lot of Caucasians come in here, of course, for business. And right. a lot of them have fun, too. Right. But then I saw people like my wife come here and all they do is to have fun, of mm. course, go to the beaches and all of that. Right. And I was telling my wife that, look, there are a lot of other people that do not look like us that are involved more, right. you know, with, with the process of growth and development okay. in Africa. Okay. So how can we get more people, not just to come here, more mm. black people, not right. just to come here to come and have fun, yeah, but sure. also to the look impact. at the business aspect. Because I, I told her that one of the things that keeps a person interested in a place is if they have an interest there. Right. So of course, for people like my wife who has a relationship with somebody from here, that's sure. a way to keep your interest here. Right. But another thing is if you have a business, mm -hmm. or you're doing some type of, developmental project right. 
that gives you a reason to keep coming back to this beautiful continent. For sure. So Certified Africa decided that anybody that ever comes on our experiences, mm -hmm. it will not just be to travel here, but okay. also to come and explore business opportunities so you have a stake on the African continent. That's fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I see. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I can see you've started off very well and um, you've, you, you're operating in a very little nice niche, um, which has great potential for growth. I mean, the, the African continent has so much to offer. Um, not many people know about Africa, like you're saying, you know, um, and the images of Africa are always the, the disaster or the famine or the illness or the civil war. But people or very few people know about the beautiful landscapes and the festivals. So there's no doubt that the niche you're operating in has a very, very positive future. And um, I think you thought very well about that. Obviously, it must be a passion of yours before you're able to sustain it, right? Yes. Great, great, great. We love business, of course. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and of course, personally, I love culture. Anything African culture, I really enjoy. Right. So combining those two is like who we are. So we don't have to struggle to do it. It's just a matter of helping other people to, you know, get involved with us in, in that same space. Mm, that's, that's lovely. And that, I mean, that that is what will naturally sustain it and keep it keep it flowing because you, you, you don't put in so much effort and it comes naturally to keep it going. That's fantastic. We'll be looking out for Certified Africa. Let's go for a commercial break. Welcome back. And so what would you say is one of the most important things that someone moving back home should think about um, in their planning stage? Because people watching the show will be, some will be in the stage of coming back home, some will be just thinking about it, but what do you think in your experience is one of the most important things you must have in your mind making this journey? How, how are you going to make a living? Mm. <clears throat> on the continent, of course, you're not coming to take from that country or take from the government. Okay. What you're coming to do is to add value. Add, uh, add value. That's okay. it. That's, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Add value to the country. Okay. So come with some sort of business plan. Mm. If you don't have it already when you're there, you can come and see, look around, mm -hmm. see what's needed, and then sort of head in that direction. Mm. Um, when, when you've done that, you can, you're thinking about adding value. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you working on your own. Okay. You're thinking about employing or slash working with okay. the locals. Okay. So you're coming back to be with your brothers and sisters. You're coming sure. back to live in harmony with your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're thinking, think about other people. Mm -hmm. I've always been that way anyway from... Okay. I was little, okay. you know, okay. <laughs> always thought about other people, right. not just about me. And right. I would like the diaspora coming okay. back to the African continent mm -hmm. or coming back to Ghana mm -hmm. to always think about other people, mm. not only themselves. Right. When you're coming with a business plan, mm -hmm. think about who can you employ mm -hmm. or who can you work with or mm -hmm. which family member or which friend can mm. you bring along to get everybody into this, uh, you know, coming right. back to the continent and everybody being successful. Sure. And I'm sure if you if you plan it right, you may not even have to reinvent the wheel. You may find <clears throat> there are people already um, 
into some small things that you can link up with. Absolutely. You don't always have to start something fresh, something, <clears throat> you know, new. Mm -hmm. You can always look to your brother over there or look to your sister over there and think, hmm, that brother needs this, that sister needs this. I can help in some way. Mm. You know, either monetary or, or physical. Mm -hmm. I can help in some way sure. to elevate that business. Mm. And that's, that's what we need to do more of, is, is, is working together. Sometimes Absolutely. we work so much in a silo and try to do it all by ourselves. But um, if, <clears throat> if we borrow from uh, the whole concept of Ubuntu, I am because you are, that's right. we should bring our resources together and, um, you know, obviously where it fits, but um, to take advantage of those, 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 those um, opportunities when we put our, our resources together. Absolutely. Great. And there are a lot of opportunities mm. on the continent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And what about on the Quay side? Since your experience is also a little different from Angie's, but what would you say is the number one thing that you'd want to um, people to think about when they're making this move here? Uh, so, I mean, for me personally, I, and from experience, some of the people we've, we've dealt with in okay. moving here, some of the people we've encountered, yeah. I believe, aside the business piece, which is very key, right. the survivor, sure. it's about the culture. Okay. Because that could be a huge surprise for a lot of people who are coming. Mm -hmm. If they don't wrap their minds around right. that they're coming to a whole different world altogether. Right. Right. So how can I learn about how these people also do things? Right. That could get very difficult. And that mm. has sent a lot of people packing mm. back to wherever they're coming from, okay. which should not be the case. So wow. I think people should really take the cultural piece very seriously. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big shock to mm -hmm. them when they come. And even when they, they come before, you know, learning about some of the things right. that, that the very country they're coming to does, sure. they should be open right. when they get here. Okay. They shouldn't try to be closed up. And right. a lot of people come and they're looking for other people from where they come from mm. to associate with. That's right. not too good. You're going to come in See, exactly. You need to find the people that are here and see how you can connect. So you're mm. open to, to how they live. Mm. And that will help you a lot because I've seen it both ways. People who have just come in and they still keep the culture of where they're coming right. from. Right, same They don't last. Right. You see, but those who are open to the locals, right. they're so happy, they merge in, and, and they, they kind of last. And you learn more. Exactly. You learn you more. You're so genuinely hard. happy. Cultural exchange. So that's one thing I think is very key for me that a lot mm. of people need to, to, to take seriously. I see. What would, about you? I would say that um, one thing that people should really think about is the mental and the emotional piece before mm. they move. I think that some people who are excited about moving, they mm. tend to forget or neglect to realize that whatever problems that you had back in um, the West, mm -hmm. those same problems will resurface mm -hmm. when you move if you do not deal with those issues before you move. Okay. If there's something that is bothering you, like if you have a spirit of ungratefulness or if you have a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. sometimes those same things can follow us when right. we move here and they right. can create problems for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those things have to be identified and dealt with mm -hmm. if we want to have great energy when okay. we come here. Okay. So, you know, I want to encourage more people to deal with issues that have been haunting us before mm. we move. Because there's a lot of trauma that has happened to us as black people in the diaspora. Mm. And if, when we don't deal with those traumatic issues, right. they just keep trailing us wherever yeah, they carry go. forward. Yes. That's, that's, that's very right, very right. And as you can say, you can literally see it. Um, and so you have to mentally prepare yourself mm -hmm. that you're coming to a new a new place and, and be open-minded not to expect um it's it's funny sometimes when i'm with some people who've just moved home and they're expecting the same sort of amenities and they're asking like where's it? so there's no mcdonald's here where's this and you have to know that this is not where you're coming from and um you know it's time to try something new mm -hmm. so that's, that's that's wonderful advice okay can i just say this sure the diaspora Leave your Western mentality behind. Leave mm. it behind. Leave that mindset behind. Mm -hmm. Come with an open mind mm. and come to get along. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned culture. Mm. Come to get along with your brothers and your sisters. Right. Whatever you learned in the West, unlearn it. Try mm. and unlearn it. Just come with an open mind. And as you said, don't look for like-minded people because mm -hmm. you won't get very far right delve into that culture okay open yourself up right. and you know that way you'll get far 
Fantastic. So while we're discussing um, the experience of moving back, the word trauma came up about the experience that you know our brothers and sisters have had on that side, and, and very, very rightly so. Um, sometimes it becomes cliche, but let's let's delve into that a little bit because this is a real experience that people have had. I mean, um, just feel free about discussing some of um, the experiences that you, you you recall, which, you know, sum up into this thing you call trauma. Yeah, I think that um, a lot of people who are in the States tend to deal with um, discrimination and they tend to deal with um, fear for their lives. Mm. Um, I think that it is, like, that takes a toll on people and they are constantly in this frame of mind, um, feeling like my life could potentially end today if I have an interaction with a police officer or if I do something wrong, you know, you know, people could just be walking down the street mm. doing normal day-to-day -day activities and have a fear that their life could be ended for no reason at all. That mm. is something heavy, mm. you know, for someone to carry with. And I think that being able to come to a place where that fear is not in place takes like these invisible shackles mm. that we walk around with. It takes those shackles off mm. and it allows for us to feel free. Mm. You wouldn't even understand how it feels to be here in Ghana and to walk around and not have to fear for my life. Mm. And when I go back to the States sometimes, I just immediately feel this cloud of like doom mm. when I get back because there is a certain energy there that, um, you know, causes people to fear. We shouldn't mm. have to live in a state of fear. Um, additionally, you know, people are working in environments where mm. they feel oppressed. They feel like they can't be themselves. They okay. feel like they have to put on a persona in order to fit into corporate America Not or acceptable. yeah, and be acceptable. Mm. That is also, um, you know, takes a toll on people's mental and psyche. And mm. that is also another chain, invisible chain that we have on us. Mm. Um, that takes a toll on people and causes people to have a lot of anger. Mm. Like, they carry this anger and this energy with them. And, you know, there are a lot of people who say, oh, I want to move. But you want to make sure that you address those things that have been shackling you. Mm. Anger, fear, address those things mm. because we don't need that energy being carried over when you come here sure. to start a new life in your path. Sure. Um, you see, when you when you if you don't <laughs> deal with that, when you come here, it becomes even worse. Mm. That's what people don't realize, and that's why, of course, one of the ways is therapy, mm -hmm. because that if you have a professional take you through a process okay. whereby they, they tell you that if you want to come to a new place mm. and, and be able to even trust people. Right you have to first of all deal with the fact that you're in a place where you don't trust your neighbor. Okay. You know, a few days ago, I was kind of, um, and let me use the word, cursing at some other driver okay. who was driving anyhow. Mm. And mm -hmm. we started, we erased the discussion you that if you were doing this, <laughs> if you're doing this in America, right. that person could actually follow you right. and then shoot you. So, these are two different worlds. So you're, right. you're in a place where you can't even... I remember some time ago, I had a banana in my hands in mm. America. And I was just... I just forgot where I was. So I just took the banana out from the guy she was driving by then. And I acted like I was shooting at something. Mm. The way my wife screamed, like I killed somebody. Yeah. Because she was so scared that right. somebody would see me with that banana and think that I'm with a gun. Exactly. So if I live in a place like that for a very long time, that is registered in my mind. Yeah. I walk with some fear. I don't trust the, the next the mm. guy next door. Mm. When I come to a place like this and I've not dealt with those things, right? I don't trust anybody, and that makes me very unhappy yeah. because everybody's looking at me like, why is it that this guy don't trust anybody? Mm. But yeah. because I've not dealt with where I'm coming from, right? And here so, we live in a community. We don't live in islands. Exactly, can't, in can't isolation. Live, live so there. that's why people must take that aspect very seriously. Mm. You know, so it's not enough for us to fight, of course, Black Lives Matter and things mm -hmm. like that. That's great, mm -hmm. but. You know, these things don't change overnight. Mm. So individually, if we're moving to a new place like Africa, mm. we need to be able to, you know, like like Angie said, unlearn some of these things that have been passed on even generation after generation mm. before we come here. That's how we can live 
you know, in peace and be happy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just be the same thing. So, here. from what you both said, I mean, it, it's obviously that black lives is not, it's not cliche. Black lives do need to matter because there is a systematically ingrained issue that's happening there. Yes, there is. As I always say that it's unfortunate that a lot of the money that goes into movies um, comes from one side. Otherwise, you would have, with the kind of technology we have for filmmaking, the kind of graphic nature of that experience has never been captured on film before. You know, most of the movies that show you the transatlantic uh, journey um, have been powdered down. Yes. You know, but th th there's no movie that actually makes you immersed in what, what it was to be on a boat um, and to arrive in a land where when you left, it was hot and you arrive in Virginia or Georgia in the middle of winter and just to wonder what, 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 what did your God do? What, 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 what damnation is this? So we on the continent need to be embracing and welcoming back um, and understanding and realizing that um, our brothers and sisters need help and support. You know, um, they're, they're, they're good people, black people, and there's some bad black people. Um, but we need to realize that we should, we should, we should, we should help each other out, um, especially when it, it requires that, you know, we have to hold our hands and, and, and lead the way. And um, as Africans, we, we, we live communally, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. But like both of you have said, um, it's important to come back and mingle, not to remain in one community, but to learn and to try different, different things, to be open-minded. That's the only way we discover new things, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, so I think uh, this is the wrap of another episode. And I'm sure people watching at home have um, found a lot of interesting tips, especially if you're thinking of moving back to Africa, and you should be. If you are young and you're thinking of the future, the riches of this planet are in Africa. People always have this idea that the riches will come from outside, but the riches of this planet are still in Africa. And it's so amazing that after thousands of years of plundering that wealth, we are still the richest. That's the companies right. know it. Mm -hmm. The Chinese know it. Yes. And everybody else who's coming here to create wealth knows it. So um, if you're African, wherever you are in the world, whether you're in Brazil, Papua New Guinea, uh, the USA, Chicago, or Birmingham, you need to know that Africa is the richest planet, rich in culture, in history, and in, in economic resource. And it's time you move back home. So I want to thank you guys for coming on the show thank and for putting out a good example and for being inspirational to someone who's going to learn from your experience and finally make it back to these shores. Thank you. All right, well, we've come to the end of another episode of the Blackout Show. It's brought to you by Ahara Studios and supported by MOF, Ministry of the Future, and HOC, House of Cain. As you can see, we have a lovely discussion about the experience of returnees and what it is to actually make the move back home, how you survive and how you plan for the future. And we hope that you watching the show have picked some tips that's going to help you to actualize the dream of coming back home, moving back to Ghana, moving back to Kenya, moving back to Swaziland, Malawi, Uganda, Lesotho. African continent is vast and very diverse and we welcome you back home and we want to catch you again on the Blackout Show. Thank you very much for watching.